Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to listen to my uh, my presentation here. Uh, I'd especially like to thank those that are watching in later or from France. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, as you know, my name is Tom Shepard, and I have been working with Alyssa as the logistics intern. Um, I've truly enjoyed and appreciated uh, all the opportunities. Uh, and the experiences that Team Hop has offered, and I'm excited to review the findings of my uh, internship. Okay, so this graph compares the, uh, the fall RFQ rates to the actual rates that we uh, ended up paying. Um, and uh, as you can see, Team Hop uh, routinely paid more on the, the actual costs than the RFQ rate had provided. Um, the reasons for this are partly due to the rush, uh, it, was a very, it was kind of rushed, we didn't have as much time as we would like, um, as, uh, and it was used for a relatively short duration. Um, another reason for the discrepancy um, was anything due to uh, like drop loads or, miscommunic or communication problems, as well as a lack of leverage uh, due, again, in part to the rush nature of the of the rates. So this is one of the uh, the things that I would want to improve on, uh, being able to use the RFQ as a more um, etched in stone version of the prices that we would pay, as it gives us a better indication of how we're doing compared to the markets, as well as um, uh, being able to uh, project how much exactly we will be paying when we get those RFQ rates. Okay, so now we'll take a look at um, the, my primary objectives and the role that I, uh, I, I was in as the logistics intern. Okay, so the three primary, my primary objectives were to decrease the shipping prices, of course, uh, improve carrier quality, um, as well as to create an expanding carrier contact list from which to identify carriers uh, in a more uh, in a quick and easy fashion. Alright, so decreasing shipping costs was like my first and primary goal. Oops. Uh, margins on commodities such as magnesium and phosphate are traditionally very tight. So any, in any way that we can decrease those prices can get us new business and really improve the overall quality um, of, the, of the business itself. Um, the next thing I would try to do is improve the quality of our carriers. Uh, that, that was another important objective. Uh, when I first sat down with Katie and Kristen to better understand their roles, I quickly uh, learned that logistics is often more of a, uh, an art than a science, and that plans often go awry and you know just errors happen. So the quality of the carriers is one of the main factors in easing those problems and mitigating the losses that can uh, result. And the last objective uh, was to create an expanded carrier contact list. Um, uh, this was important because uh, Timo had a relatively small list of carriers from which to choose from. And by expanding this list, um, you can better perform under uh, circumstances where you're in a crisis situation, you need to find a carrier ASAP, and the ones that we have in our current list can't do it. And it also gives you the option of finding more uh, carriers to contact without all the lost time of having to go through and search via the internet or whatever method that so it's a great, uh, great resource in, in moving on product. Okay, so some of the uh, some of the new carrier results here. So overall, I've contacted around 150 uh, different uh, trucking companies that would have the ability to move travel. Um, they range from small truck operation, the small single truck operations out of their garage to large billion-dollar multinational companies. Um, 83 of those companies in which I contacted are all available, I guess 84 after this morning, are all available on the Master Carrier Asset List. Um, the list contains details on things such as their range, their truck type, um, their contact information, and everything else that you would uh, expect to find when you wanted to identify a new carrier uh, in which to use. And on the Winter RFQ, which is the new one that I have uh, spent time in creating, uh, the new carriers make up 40% of the lane coverage. So they're already hopefully going to be a very active part of our, uh, our new carrier uh, network.
All right, so looking at uh, a little bit of the, uh, okay, so, uh, Okay, so uh, improving the carrier quality is uh, is very important. Uh, we've kind of gone over some of the things, but uh, as I've talked to Katie and Kristen, um, some of the things that can happen with uh, a poor uh, a poor carrier are thing are instances such as drop loads, miscommunications, price discrepancies, and overall headaches for our customers, our service reps, of course, and pretty much everybody involved. Um, these kind of uh, these kind of problems uh, really hurt the relationships that TMOP has created, um, and really is something that I think uh, can and should be improved. So to protect against these issues, I searched out smaller, more asset-owned companies that are traditionally more concerned with their reputation as well as the quality of their work. Um, in the experiences that I have um, heard about, as well as from what I've seen firsthand. When you deal with like a large third-party logistics company, it can be uh, they have less skin in the game, and your loads are less valuable to them than they are to you. So they do not they're not necessarily incentivized to really you know step up and make sure all these things go right. Um, another uh, important thing that I did to make sure that the carriers that I was contacting uh, were of higher quality um, was to really pay attention to the types of conversations I had and to focus on how they, uh, the level of engagement they had and if they were very open to the idea of potentially moving some of our loads um, or if they were more dismissive and less uh, responsive to the, the questions I had um, as well as like the overall idea of what we were doing. And in those ways I really uh, did look to you know, improve their carrier uh, quality which in turn should save everybody a lot of time, stress, and headaches. All right, so some of the results that I've had in improving carrier quality. So uh, the first the first big one was uh, we have a, uh, a new dry van broker. Uh, we've replaced Reliant, which has been a big headache for a lot of us here. Um, Reliant was uh, was one of the carriers that had a pattern of failing to meet the standards of Tima. And uh, we replaced it uh, with, uh, with Freightquote. And Freightquote, which is just an example of uh, the improved quality of our carriers, um, now covers 91% of our dry van lanes and will undoubtedly improve our customer service to our customers, uh, which is obviously very important for us. Um, another way that we've improved it is on the fall RFQ, brokers accounted for 77% of one lanes. Um, that percentage has fallen to 56%, uh, which is a 21% decrease, which is fantastic. Um, and that number alone is not, uh, does not show the full story as with the improvement and the replacement of brokers, we've actually improved the quality of the carriers far more than just that 21% decrease um, would indicate. And uh, one anecdotal uh, story, as we have not been using it for that long, but uh, Kristen related an instance where there was a problem on an LTL. LTL load that resulted in the carrier uh, actually leaving, uh, leaving without the load uh, in hand. Um, she got in, into contact with Steve from Freyquo. And he was able to get in there, get his hands dirty, and resolve the issue. And uh, it resulted in a uh, successful shipment. And that is uh, just a, a small example of the kinds of improvements and um, benefits that happen when you get uh, a new carrier that can really, that is willing to go the extra mile to make sure that you are satisfied and they are satisfied for the, the benefits of both. All right, and now on to the most uh, important part would be the uh, decreasing of shipping costs. So um, by having plenty of time to work on the winter RFQ, uh, I was able uh, to implement and execute an RFQ strategy. Um, and in this way, I think I've improved our, our shipping prices here. So the first strategy I employed was to obviously get new carriers uh, that would replace expensive and inconsistent carriers. So that was the first major part of the strategy. And then the second was, uh, through the advice of Alyssa, was to take the rates that we got from our carriers and then 
uh, take some time to negotiate them down and see how much they can move from their lowest point. Um, and by executing those two strategies, uh, I think we've achieved some pretty good results. Okay, so the new carrier cost savings that uh, we are enjoying. So as previously stated, new carriers have accounted for about 40% of, uh, of the lanes won on the winter RFQ. Uh, many of the new carriers are asset owned and are strategically located near uh, where either our warehouses or our customers, which makes back loads and uh, and uh, the initial loads a lot easier to, to manage and will overall decrease the prices of shipping. All right, so to calculate the $7,198 figure uh, that you see there is quite simple. So I found I took the lanes that our new carriers won and, as well as, and then subtracted it from the second lowest bid of our old carrier, which represents the, um, the new carrier cost savings, and then multiplied that by the number of loads in the quarter, and then added those up per lane. And when you, when you do that uh, simple addition and multiplication, you come up with a figure of $7,198, which is, uh, pretty much states that if we would have done the same exact strategy with the fall, or from the fall RFQ to the winter RFQ, it would have come up um, at least $7,198. And that is not to mention the fact that we often paid more on the fall RFQ, or for the fall RFQ, uh, lanes than the fall RFQ stated. So it's even probably more than that in the end. So the next, the second part of the strategy was um, to negotiate uh, the lowest rate. So the strategy I employed, as I've kind of already outlined here, was to take, find the lowest rate um, on the lane and then get in contact with that carrier and try to negotiate and see how far we can uh, push them down. Um, and uh, using that method, I was successfully able to reduce the rates of 28 of the 57 lanes, um, which is a pretty good ratio. And taking those savings and multiplying it by the number of loads and then adding them up results in the figure of $2,778 per quarter, which again is if we would have employed the same tactics from the fall to the winter, this would have been at least $2,770 more. Um, so I would uh, Count that as a, a pretty solid success. And uh, another note that I would like to make is that uh, the carriers were very willing to negotiate. Uh, it was not like I had to, you know, twist arms or, you know, play too much hardball. As they were, they were very open to. They were malleable in their prices, which I was a little bit surprised of, given that it was a an RFQ document that they had submitted on. But uh, it was great to see that there was some success there and. It was a great experience on my end. Okay, so overall, um, looking at the, the final results of the, of the cost savings and everything else that went into that, um, if you add up the uh, savings from the new carriers as well as the negotiations, uh, that number comes out to $9,776 per quarter, which again um, is more indicative of if you would have used the same strategies and methods with the same carriers as you did in the fall RFQ, you would have been, it would have been $9,776 more in shipping costs. Um, and that is, uh, that, that would be the main takeaway is that like employing these strategies and finding your own, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of wiggle room that you can make, which uh, is obviously important in a, in a business that is so margin tight. Okay, and then comparing our winter to fall RFQ. Uh, so here, here's a, the graphical representation um, on the x-axis here. You have uh, each each number indicates a lane that is the, exactly the same from the fall and the winter. So some lanes are not included for the obvious reasons that they do not appear on both the fall and winter RFQ. Um, and as you can see, the rates are uh, relatively the same uh, in a lot of the instances. And as I just claimed, I, I claim I have saved nine thousand seven hundred seventy-six dollars, but though they appear to be relatively similar, and um, I'd like to explain that. So, for the most part, or for the most part, in a lot of the cases, on the fall RFQ, we paid, um, in a lot of occasions, we paid significantly more than the RFQ rate would indicate. And again, that was mostly due to the rush nature of the RFQ, as well as the very short one-month duration that was in place which did not lead to like a, a very cohesive and easy to follow plan and strategy that would uh, allow for consistency of the prices, 
which has hopefully been uh, remedied with the fact that we have been uh, working on this now for a couple months and the carriers now have I have made it very clear that our expectations are that they follow those and I think our service reps are also aware of this so hopefully that will be a lot more consistent. Um, but uh, the overarching idea is that we were unable to actually obtain the, the rates that the RFQ set in the fall and now with our new carriers as well as uh, a better understanding for, uh, from them and us, our communication I believe is better, um, that they will stick to those, those rates unless um, in more unless like crisis situations happen or something goes uh, very awry. Um, another thing to note is that whenever you uh, compare a fall to winter or a winter to spring or a year to year, there's uh, there's variables that are going to change that are going to affect the price of shipping. So one major one would be uh, would be like gas prices. As gas prices fluctuate for you know whatever reasons that uh, that happen. Um, that's obviously going to be a major input into the cost of the trucking prices. So comparing them across times is a little bit like comparing it from apples to oranges. Um, and uh, in my time here, uh, with my experience from the fall to the winter, I believe that our carriers have shown a, uh, a renewed commitment to the RFQ rates, as well as that over uh, winter, that over the winter, that they will uh, remain more consistent to the prices and that the savings that I've outlined in this will be a true reflection of the improvement from the fall to the winter RFQ as well as an indication of our improved uh, situation in the carrier and shipping market. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody again for taking the time out of the day to listen to my presentation and now I will uh, I'll open it up. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, I'd be happy to uh, hear it out and provide, hopefully provide an answer.